I used Alex Tremosi's new book, $100 million Leads, to scale my business to $100 million. So I recently finished reading Alex Tremosi's new book, $100 Million Leads, which I highly recommend. And inside of the book, there's one section called the Paid Ads Playbook. Now, I was particularly interested in this section because I run a performance-based digital advertising agency. So I provide digital advertising as a literal service to clients on how Alex Ramosi thinks about paid advertising as a whole and what his strategies are for running digital advertising at a high level and scaling those ads. So in this video, what I essentially did was took Alex Ramosi's concepts around paid advertising and the math behind scaling profitable paid advertising. And I put it all into one Google sheet that you can plug and play. It's a free tool that I created for my own business to use for my clients, for potential clients. And I wanna give it away and show you guys how to use this tool for you guys so that you can visualize how to profitably run paid advertising and scale paid advertising and how to think about paid advertising at a high level so that you can grow your business to $100 million just with paid ads. So let's jump in my computer and let me show you this free tool. All right, so here's the tool. What we're using is a Google Sheet here. And essentially there's a bunch of different calculations in the back end that are gonna spit out all of the forecasting, all the numbers that we need to understand how to spend money on paid advertising profitably in order to grow to 10 million, uh, 100 million, whatever it might be, right? You can kind of do the math behind that and looking at your business economics and how the math breaks down in order to scale to whatever target you wanna hit. So don't get too overwhelmed by this dashboard here. There's a lot here. I'm gonna break down each component of it. Uh, and again, what you will be able to do is go in the description and you can actually grab this entire template and plug and play your different numbers and experiment with this yourself to see exactly how this works. So I'm gonna go over all of this to make it understandable at a high level for you. And then you can take this play with it yourself and really dig into the numbers so that you can understand it for yourself. So as you can see, this is called the scalable advertising calculator, right? And that's the goal of this is to understand how your ads can scale for your business and your business economics, or like the, the math behind your business and, and what your you know average order value is, you know, what your, what your business economics are, which is gonna be unique to your particular business, which we'll get into. So, uh, this is the business metrics section. So essentially what we're going to be plugging in here is these unique components that are custom to your business and then your unique advertising channel metrics. So maybe you spend a bunch of money on Facebook ads or uh, Google ads, whatever it might be. You can plug those numbers in here to get a better visualization as far as that one main channel, how you can scale with that based on the economics that you have currently of what you're spending on those channels. So it does require you to be already spending paid advertising dollars, but you can play around with this to, to even just forecast and see where you could potentially land by estimating and guessing on some of these numbers. So this is the business metrics, which we'll start here. Then we're gonna get into the ad funnel calculator, which is, looks like this, where we'll get into different parts of your ad funnel, where it could be breaking, where you could optimize further, and how you can look at profits from your overall advertising. And then next we get into the pricing calculator. So this is for an agency or if you are uh, a business that uh, wants to forecast what it could look like um, with a person managing this, this is where you can plug those numbers in here to see how much it's costing you and how much you're actually profiting on the front end and the back end. And then we lastly have the scaling until it breaks section, which is where we're gonna look at the entire economics of your business, how much front end revenue you're gonna make and all of these different metrics here to where you can see at some point we're here we're doing uh, in between 92 million and 148 million dollars at uh, five and 10 million dollars in ad spend. So it's pretty awesome here, and we're going to get into this. So let's go ahead and jump into the business metrics here. So starting out, this section is where we're plugging in our economics for our business. So I have some templated ones already set up here. You can adjust these though. So right now I have our MRR at a hundred thousand dollars. I have our advertising slash marketing budget or spend at twenty thousand dollars. Our new customers per month are $200. Our average order value is about $200. Again, just for simple math's sake, our customer lifetime value in this case, so how much money a customer spends with us over the course of um, their lifetime. So many purchases, right? Typically businesses have recurring buys from same customers. So on average, we get $600 in value from each customer. And again, our average value per order is about $200. So that means our average order tenure is about three orders. And then we have our profit margin, which is pretty simple there, but that's after our expenses, our cost of goods sold, after everything like that, that is how much profit is left over per sale. And so with these numbers, then we can get a good forecast as far as our scaling metrics. So based on these current metrics, because we have a $20,000 ad spend and we are getting about $200 or 200 customers per month, our customer acquisition cost is $100. 
So it's easy to calculate. Maybe you already know your customer acquisition cost. You can play around with that, but you should have an idea as far as how many new customers you're getting per month on average. And you could customize and play around with this, right? Look, let's say you were getting 400 new customers per month. Then you would know that your uh, customer acquisition cost is $50. Let's say your customer acquisition cost, or you're only getting 50 new customers per month, right? Then you would know that your customer acquisition cost is $400. Now your customer acquisition cost is essentially your cost right? Your advertising spend divided by your new customers per month. So it makes it very, very simple there. And again, you can play around with some of these other numbers as well. So your average order value here, you can divide this by, you know, in half. So you can go to a hundred dollar average order value and look at how that changes the math, or you could go to, you know, double that, maybe $400 average order value, look at how it changes that. So I'm just going to leave all these numbers as they currently are. So you can see our marketing efficiency ratio or MER is another way to think of that. So you can look up these terms. There's gonna be a lot of new terms here today for you, uh, but it's a really great learning exercise for you. So uh, if we have a total of $100,000 in revenue and we're spending $20,000 per month, that gives us an MER of five. Since we have $100,000 divided by $20,000 or our efficiency on marketing spend is a five to one, right? So pretty simple there. Again, our order slash tenure or the amount of purchases per customer is three since we have a $200 average order value and customers spend $600 with us that automatically calculates all of this stuff automatically calculates our cost per order because of our profit margin is $50 in terms of cost per order. Our profit per order is $150 our lifetime gross profit, which this is a very, very important number from Alex Tremosi's book. It is lifetime gross profit or LTGP. And that would be the total lifetime revenue from your customer or lifetime value in terms of gross profit. So because we have a $600 customer lifetime value or CLV, then we know at a 75% profit margin, our customer lifetime value or our LTGP lifetime gross profit is $450. So that's a very, very important concept to understand. And this is the basis of the most important metric to confidently scale and spend on advertising. So if you remember anything from this, remember LTGP as it's one of the most important metrics. Next, we have your target CAC. Now your target CAC, according to Alex Hermosi, should be for a good business, about a three to one in terms of your LTD, LTGP ratio to CAC ratio, right? So essentially what that means is our LTGP divided by three should be what we're shooting for as far as our customer acquisition cost. That gives us good margin. So if we know if we spend about $150 to acquire a customer, right? That's a third of a, how much profit we're making off of that customer. So we have $300 in that case of total profit left to run the business, which is what we need, right? Obviously the more, the better. Now, as you can see in this example, so you can see this is just taking LTGP divided by three. And then we have actual LTGP CAC ratio, which is the actual CAC that we're seeing based on new customers. And we're at a 4.5, which is very, very good. Anything above a three is considered very good. If your business is below a three, then there's probably some things you need to work on in the back end, and you should try to bump that up to at least a three. And so uh, just for an example of how we could play around with that, uh, for example, if I bump this up to 40,000 per month, right, you can see a lot of the numbers do change here. Um, so we can see we have LTGP, all these numbers are the same, but our actual LTGP to CAC ratio is now a 2.25. So it's significantly worse and it does hurt us and it doesn't give us that desired CAC of $150 that we're after. So hopefully all those numbers make sense and we're gonna use these numbers in the next section to further elaborate on this and then get into how the advertising funnel works and how we can scale ads. So you can play around with all these numbers and plug these numbers in for yourself if you're currently advertising. But as you can see here, our metrics, or we have 25,000 clicks for 25 for 20,000 in ad spend. Our first funnel metric, which is our first funnel step, is landing page views. So from those 25,000 clicks, we get 20,000 landing page views. Again, estimating these numbers. Then we have funnel step two, which is add to carts. So of those 20,000 landing page views, we get 2,000 add to carts. Of those 2,000 added carts, we get 1,000 initiate checkouts. And of those 1,000 initiate checkouts, we get 300 new customers. Let me change this to 200 just so it makes sense with actually the numbers that we forecasted earlier here. So we get 200 new customers. So let's go over now to the ad funnel calculator, which is gonna break down how all of these numbers look in the ad account and how we can estimate and figure out what our actual profit or take home is from advertising. Okay, so as you can see here, we're now in the ad funnel calculator doc. Now it looks pretty overwhelming here, but I'll break this down for you here. So we have all of the same numbers that are being pulled in from the business metrics 
over here. So we can see our ad spend 20,000, all the same metrics there. Now, if we have a 200 customers, what we can see is from that, at our average order value, we should be seeing about 40,000 in total revenue, which gives us a ROAS of two, of exactly two, and we have our profit margin here of 75%. So from here, we can see where the funnel is essentially breaking, where we're not seeing the efficiencies or industry averages that we want to see. In this case, this is for e-commerce. So the first funnel metric that we're looking at is our click to landing page. And so click to landing page, we have a target of about 80%, or this is what we're currently seeing is 80% of clicks reach the landing page. Our industry average target is 80% and our difference for industry average is right on target. So our target is reached in that standpoint. Now, our landing page to add to cart rate, we're looking at about 10%. So 10% of landing page views convert to an add to cart. And so on this metric, we are also reaching that target there and you can modify this for your industry averages. Now, what we also have here is our add to cart to initiate checkout. And so our add to cart to initiate checkout rate is 50%. And so our industry average target is 90%. And so we're a little bit off that industry average about 40%. And so our target to modify is you need to optimize the cart funnel. So it's gonna tell you where you need to better optimize in order to reach those targets and industry averages and improve your funnel and improve your advertising metrics so that you can see better results and better net profit overall. So that might be something you wanna consider. Then you can see our add to cart to purchase rate is 10%. So the next step in the funnel, 10% of people move over from initiate checkout or from add to cart to purchase. So we can say we have a 25% uh, industry average right here. So about 15% off of that. And then so we have uh, about a 20% difference as far as our target to get to 30% um, add to cart to purchase rate. And so we have to optimize the checkout in that sense as well. And we also have cart abandonment rate. Again, same thing. We need to optimize the checkout funnel. And then we have an overall conversion rate of 1%. Our industry average that we're looking to target is about 2%. As you can see here for every, we spent $20,000 here. We had uh, 20,000 people visit the website and we had 200 new customers there. So we wanna reach 400 new customers. And so this is something that we could actually change in the back end to then, uh, profitably forecast and predict essentially how much new customers that we're gonna be bringing in and what our conversion rate should be. So if we know that we need to have, for example here, 200, we need to go from a 1% to a 2% as far as our uh, overall conversion rates, then we know we can better optimize one of these steps in the funnel to see better throughput, which should be one of the cart funnels right, right here to see that throughput uh, difference, to see an overall really big lift in our new customers total. So let's go back here and look at how we can do that, right? So if we see here, in, ter in terms of our ad metrics, if we can improve the quality of our ads and of the funnel right here, so instead of seeing um, 25,000 clicks to 20,000 landing page views and only 10% of them going to the add to cart step, if we can improve this to 4,000, so let's say we can double this, right? to 4,000 add to carts. And then subsequently this would also double to 2,000. And then this would also double to 400 just given the same metrics for everything else, right? And so if we go back here, then we can see we are right aligned with industry average here. And then we don't need to optimize anything in the funnel. We're good to go. We just need to optimize some of these other steps right here. Now below the funnel conversion rates, which are also very important for seeing how your business works and how paid advertising works at a high level, you have your actual values right here. So this is where you can look to see how much is your cost per click, your cost per landing page view, your cost per add to cart, which are very, very important when looking at scaling ads. So first we have our cost per link click here, which is about 80 cents. And so our uh, industry target here is $1. And you can see we are having the target reach on all of this. Our uh, cost per landing page view is $1, which we are below. Our cost per added cart is $5, which we're well below. Our cost per initiate checkout is $10, which we're well below. And our cost per purchase is $50, which we are well uh, or right aligned with our cost per purchase that we're looking for. So you can see here our ROAS is a four and our industry averages uh, as a 2.5 and so we are above industry average here which we're target is reached and it's telling us that we should be scaling our budget here spending more on ads overall so for what this tells us is as you can see here we're spending twenty thousand. we're generating eighty thousand dollars in revenue now this is a hard target to reach so i'm actually just going to drop this back down to where we were so i'm just going to go two thousand here i'm going to go one thousand i'm going to go back to 200. now if we go here now we can see the same metrics here we can see the ROAS is at two so we spent $20,000, we generated $40,000. Now, because we have a uh, $600 lifetime value, uh, our total lifetime revenue from those new 200 customers is 120,000. And after our profit margins and everything like that, as you can see, all these numbers are right here. Uh, our profit before ad spend is $30,000. Our profit after ad spend is $10,000. And our lifetime value profit after ad spend is $70,000. So we generate $120,000 in new value 
over the course of the lifetime of these new customers. Now, who knows how long that is going to be, how long it takes for you to actually capture all that value from your customers. But that's where we can see is at least we have a $70,000 value over our average customer lifetime value. So our ad spend required to hit our target. Now, let's say our target is we want to reach $500,000 in new LTV revenue. So in new revenue per month, we want to scale to $500,000 per month. In order to do that, we need to spend about $250,000 to hit that new target. And we need about 2,500 new customers or about 833 new customers if we're considering our lifetime value. So this now gives us a really good idea of how we can scale, how we can optimize through our ads and the actual advertising funnel itself so that we have a really solid business in place to confidently scale to the targets that we want to achieve. So hopefully you're following along with me right now. Now let's go over to the pricing calculator. If say you wanted to have an agency like us do this for you and help you scale your ads to um, you know, $10,000 in spend per month, $100,000 in spend per month, whatever it would be, help you scale your business to new heights. Uh, what we can do here is do that pr pricing calculator, right? So in this case, if we wanted to spend $250,000, which is that target that we wanted here to reach that $500,000 in new revenue, if we spent $250,000, we would need a 1.5 ROAS or our ROAS actually here that we want to hit is a two ROAS. So let me just go ahead and select this ROAS right here. So we want to hit two ROAS. Uh, then we can set in our, our retainer here for our fees for uh, whatever company is managing you. So for ourselves, we have our flat retainer service fee at $49.97. Then we have our top line revenue percentage fee at 7%. So this is how it would break down. Again, we have all of our same metrics here. So we can see our LTV, profit margin, cost per order, our gross profit per order, our break even ROAS, which is the ROAS we need to hit on the front end to break even. If we have a ROAS anything worse than this, we're gonna lose money. And then our target CAC to hit that target ROAS is a hundred dollars. And then you can see our lifetime gross profit here is uh, $450. And then you can see here our uh, break even lifetime CAC is $450. And then our break even lifetime ROAS uh, break even lifetime ROAS is 0 0.44. So there's a lot of different metrics there. I'm not going to break down each, but what you should know is that in, uh, this number is very, very important here because you can confidently spend uh, at a 0 0.44 ROAS uh, and still be profitable. So if you're anything above a 0 0.44 ROAS over the long term, over the lifetime value of the customers, you're still gonna be profitable. If you fall below that, then you are gonna be not profitable. So let's look at how this would work. So if we're managing this, we wanna get a two row as we're spending 250,000 in ad spend, our purchase conversion value is gonna be $500,000. Our total new customers is gonna be 2,500 new customers. Our return on ad spend again is 250,000. Our gross profit in this case, given our margins is $125,000 after ad spend. And then our agency fee at $4,997. And then our agency performance fee, which is 7% of the total top line revenue. So $500,000 is 35,000. And then you can see our net front end profit after fees is $85,000. So you guys still pocket $85,000 with these business metrics. And then your net LTV profit because your business has that recurring revenue coming in is $1.125 million for a net LTV profit after everything of $835,000. So this business is obviously very, very efficient, but you can see what that would look like, you know, and customize these numbers to see what it would look like if your business wasn't very efficient, right? So you can go back here and you can change this gross profit margin to 50% and look at how that changes, or you can change your customer lifetime value to, you know, $300 instead of $600 and look at how all of these numbers really, really change. And you can see from just those couple of changes, right? Dropping down the customer lifetime value from 200 to 300 and our profit margin to 50%. As you can see here, we're still getting a two ROAS. So our ad spend numbers are still the same, but our gross profit on the front end, because our break even ROAS now is two, we have a $0 uh, margin on the front end. We actually lose $39,000 after our fees, but your net LTV profit, because you have $100 in surplus um, with your LTV, gives you $375,000, which after uh, you deduct your margin of 50%, leaves you with about $85,000 in net LTV profit after all of the fees and expenses and everything like that. So that's the pricing calculator, and that's how you can really plug in and see how an agency could stack up um, if they were to manage this on your behalf and get you really great results and scale up. Lastly, let's go over to scaling until it breaks and looking at the business economics and how this would look. So taking those same numbers, let's say here we had a $20,000 
out of two ROAS. Again, this is what all the numbers would look like given your business economics, your profit margin, uh, everything like that, right? So if we spend $20,000 to two ROAS, we get $40,000 front end revenue. Our cost to fulfill that because we have a 50% profit margin now, because we just changed that, would then be $20,000. So our gross profit is 20,000. After we deduct our digital ad spend, we have $0 in front end profit. Uh, these are all of our metrics here. This is our CAC is $100. Our LTGP is $150. Our agency fee is uh, $49.97. Our top line fee is $2,800. So total for Jetstream in this case, uh, for your agency is $707.97. So our total profit here is minus that. Uh, but over the course of the total lifetime, your total net profit would be $2,200. So after you capture all of the lifetime value of that particular revenue from those new customers, your total lifetime net profit would be 2,200. And then you can see here your annualized revenue, if you were to spend this every single month, would be 720,000 and your annualized net profit would be about $26,000. So obviously not very good margins here and this does not scale. You can see if you were to spend double the amount and your ROAS would be decreasing as your ad spend more, the efficiency drops. And so you make less per dollar. Um, you're losing a ton of money right here, right? And this is what a lot of e-commerce brands do, honestly. They'll spend a lot of money and they'll burn a lot of annualized net profit here. Uh, just trying to bump up the overall annualized revenue numbers to three, four, five, six million dollars. Even though they're losing money, those numbers and metrics look better. So uh, when you're raising VC funding, it makes more sense. Now let's just revert back to those numbers that we had before to see how this would actually scale if your business metrics were improved like I just showed you, right? So we have that same $200 average order value. And instead of that, of a customer lifetime value of 300, we have the original 600. And then we have our original 75% profit margin instead of 50%. And this is how this would look now. Okay, so given the same, uh, now that we bumped up those numbers, as you can see here, $20,000 in spend out of two row as the same thing. Now we can see we have a total lifetime net profit of 62,000. And then as we scale, even though our ads are getting less efficient here, as you can see, our ROAS is dropping over time at about 20% per doubling of the total ad spend. Um, our total net profit is actually increasing uh, as we're scaling that up to a certain point and then it breaks. And then as you can see here, we spent um, significantly more right here. And we actually lost or made a total net profit that was less than the previous period. And so we have a sweet spot here for what we should be doing and what we should be achieving, and then it will break again. And so the best way to actually do this and combat this is to improve your ads overall here. And then you can reach that uh, total annualized revenue mark of somewhere close to hundred million. As you can see here, our annualized con um, uh, customer lifetime value revenue is almost hundred million dollars here, but we're at a $51 million loss. So that doesn't, that doesn't necessarily help anybody here. So what we want to do is improve our advertising results here. And if we can do that, then we're in a much better position to actually go about scaling. So let's improve the, uh, the new customers to 400. So let's say our checkout process improves. Now you can see our target ROAS is at a four and our metrics are much, much better for scaling right here. So at a four ROAS of $20,000 in spend by just improving the checkout process, you can see our downstream metrics all drastically improve, right? As we're scaling here, we still have a profitable high uh, positive ROAS here. And then you can see our total net profit percentage here is at 11%. So we're turning over $1.7 million, spending $10 million and our annualized uh, customer lifetime revenue is $197 million and our annualized net profit is $20 million. So this is how uh, business works at a really high level. They're thinking about all these metrics. They're breaking down all these numbers and they're looking at forecasting how you can profitably scale with ads, how the economics work, how, how your average order value affects your customer lifetime value, affects your customer acquisition cost, affects your lifetime gross profit, and how all of the funnel metrics really work together to slowly make those slight improvements and optimizations that lead to really cascading and improving effects on your overall advertising funnel. For one more example here, let's say instead of a 10% add to cart rate, we had a 20% add to cart rate. So we have 4,000 4, add to carts, which would lead to our initiate checkouts doubling as well to 2,000. And then that would lead to our purchases doubling to 800 here. Uh, the numbers are gonna get a little bit crazy here, but as you can see, now the numbers, everything downstream is really improved. Now we're at an eight row as at 20,000 in spend and we can scale so much more confidently. And that's how the big brands are spending $10 million plus $5 million per month, like crazy numbers. And they're seeing crazy returns like this, like $395 million at an annualized net profit of about $164 million. 
Um, so this is just an example of how this works. Not saying these numbers are totally achievable, totally realistic, but uh, just kind of makes sense and why paid advertising is such a valuable asset to any business looking to grow and scale. So again, I'll leave links to this in the description below. Definitely check this out, download it for yourself, play around with the numbers. Um, I think it's super valuable, super helpful tool. And again, credit Alex Mosey for this amazing insights and uh, sharing his skills with paid advertising so that I could share this with you. So there you go. That is the entire playbook for how to grow your business to $100 million using paid ads alone, really getting at the physics and the math behind it so that you can see that this is possible and how big businesses think about advertising at a really high level and some of the most sophisticated businesses actually scale with paid advertising. Now, again, I can't take credit for all of this. A lot of this is pulled from Alex Mosey's new book, $100 million Leads. So I highly recommend you go and check that out. If you did get value from the video, make sure to hit that like button and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of the latest content coming out for me. I'm posting a lot about paid ads and overall digital marketing. And also, if you could share this with a friend, share this with another founder, share this with somebody else who's an entrepreneur, uh, I think it would really help them to get a better visualization and idea in a really concise way about how to think about paid advertising, how to think about business as a whole. And it just go a long way for myself as well to reach more people and to grow uh, a small channel like mine. And with that, thanks so much for your time. I'll catch you in the next one. Have an amazing rest of your day. Peace.